Hello everyone and welcome back. So as of Monday, I've watched Napoleon directed by Ridley Scott. This video comes off my review of 1970s Waterloo. Before we get started, I'd like to thank everyone for their support. We just passed 50 subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. Next milestone is 100 subscribers. All right, this video is going to be my review for Napoleon. I want this video to serve as a sequel to my Waterloo video. So without further ado, let's begin. To start, I'm going to get this out of the way and say Napoleon is not a historically accurate movie. There are many half-truths presented, and unfortunately, there are many people who are going to take what's presented at face value. It doesn't help when Ridley Scott is confronted. He isn't shy when responding to criticism. So judging by his response, I believe historians are justified in criticizing his film for its historical inaccuracy. The biggest failure of this movie is it's trying to contain the life of Napoleon in two and a half hours. There are many instances of time jumps, and it, along with the Josephine scenes later, end up strangling the plot. I understand there's a four hour director's cut that exists, however, I don't believe it would fix the issues this movie has. What do I mean by this? This movie should have never been called Napoleon. It should be called Napoleon and Josephine. The title Napoleon is borderline false advertising because the crux of the plot is the relationship between Napoleon and Josephine. Don't go into this film expecting the life of Napoleon. View it as the story of Napoleon and Josephine. Thankfully, we have a lot of historical references as to the nature of their relationship. However, once again, this film has a lot of half-truths as to what occurred. Like in the fireplace scene. Did Napoleon grovel at Josephine's feet like a baby? Probably not. You have to understand, Josephine only married Napoleon because he was stable. Creatively, Ridley Scott chose that because he wanted to portray Napoleon as a weak crybaby. Which follows my next point. When Ridley Scott announced Napoleon would be his next major film, I lowered my expectations on the fact that Ridley Scott is English. Great Britain was an enemy of France during the Napoleonic Wars, and it demonstrates with how Napoleon is portrayed by Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix is able to get the look of Napoleon, however, he's unable to mimic his charisma. Ridley Scott's Napoleon Bonaparte is the version the British want you to believe existed. Not the genius strategist or the glorious conqueror, but a short man who acts like a crybaby begging in front of his cheating wife. Another issue I had was when characters from other countries spoke, they all spoke with English accents. There are two instances when native languages are utilized. It would have been pragmatic if each nation spoke with at least an accent. That way during the battle scenes, it would be simple to differentiate each nation. It reinforces that this film was made as British propaganda. In summary, what did I think of Napoleon? Well, not highly. As a historical movie, there are many inaccuracies. It's obvious Ridley Scott's portrayal of Napoleon was intentional. If Ridley Scott wanted to tell a Napoleon and Josephine love story, then this movie would be an okay love story. I'm going to repeat myself. This film should have been titled Napoleon and Josephine, but it's not. And because of that, it's not a movie I would recommend to history buffs. To an average person whose knowledge on Napoleon is surface level, they'll enjoy it. I don't know anything about the four hour director's cut. I don't believe it'll address the issues of this film. I think it'll only reinforce what critics have said. So my expectations are once again low. What did you think of Napoleon? Tell me what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching.